Over the last decade or two, minivans have gotten larger, more luxurious, and much more expensive. Well, Ford is looking to change some of that. This one is smaller, much more affordable, and it's not luxurious, but it has most of the amenities that you want. Today here on Rumblestrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive, we're gonna have a look at the un-minivan. It's the Ford Transit Connect. Ford is trying to mix it up a little bit in the family wagon segment. This is a minivan, really in the old school style of minivan, in the sense of small, compact, able to carry lots of people or lots of cargo and or both. It has no pretensions of being a crossover, going off road, um, you know, it doesn't sit super high. This feels like the old style minivan. Now, also in the old style minivan, and we'll, we'll say that starts at about 1982-ish, 1983, we'll get the exact date, to, you know. Uh, but the, the, when Chrysler launched their minivans, that changed things, because that was built off the K-Car platform. It was at a very efficient use of space. It was hugely popular. Well, minivans, as everyone knows, became the mom vehicle, the soccer, soccer mom vehicle. It's just something that you didn't want to see, and that's where the rise of the crossover came from, and the SUV, and uh, you know that was really an evolution of no one wanted to be in a station wagon anymore. You know, it, it'll all come full circle eventually. The Transit Connect is built off of the Focus and Escape. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, the for, the Focus and the Escape platform, also the Kuga, which is also the Kuga, in Europe. Um, you know, this is available as either a complete cargo vehicle or as it sits right now as the Transit Connect wagon. We are in a long wheelbase titanium edition. So this is three rows. The short wheelbase is a two row vehicle. And we were particularly interested in this particular model because it has a very good chance of becoming our next family vehicle. Our family vehicle is a 2005 Escape and it has a little over 150,000 miles on it. It's done, been an exceptional vehicle, but you know, after 150,000 miles in 10 years, it's showing a little wear and it's about time for replacement. Now we as a family have a little bit of a unique uh, situation in the sense of we have no kids, uh, which is what most people probably would be thinking about this vehicle, but we have two English Mastiffs. Now, if you try to put two English Mastiffs into most vehicles, it's not gonna work. In the Escape, we can just fit two, but it's not real comfortable for them. They're both, you know, kind of up against each other. Um, loading them is also an issue because of the crossover having such a high uh, bumper height and such just height overall, even though it's just a, you know, standard uh, small crossover. One of the things that we've been looking at with this vehicle and kind of excited about was the low bumper height and just how low it is. It's gonna make a huge difference in trying to load uh, our dogs in, especially our older one. We have, a, uh, our older Mastiff is almost 12 years old. She's, you know, pretty much at the end, you know, pretty close to the end of her life, unfortunately. And uh, she has really bad arthritis in her hips. So trying to load her is, is a little bit hard because you sort of have to pick her up and, and uh, pick her up to get her out, especially. Um, this, she could probably come close to getting in and out on her own, which is which is very cool. And that's something we think that is going to be a subsection of the people who are buying this. That's sort of a not so obvious, and that's pet lovers or people who have dogs or, you know, carry, carry uh, animals with them all the time, especially larger pets. The amount of room in here is huge. Unfortunately, due to Ford's restrictions where we weren't able to put our two dogs in here to see, um, you know, we like Ford and, and they kindly asked, please don't, don't load the dogs in because they know we have them uh, and we abided by that. But, you know, you can kind of just look and see that they'll fit pretty well in here. 
So part of what makes the Transit Connect wagon, the un-minivan as we like to say, tweet it, um, is that its overall size is a lot less than your traditional minivans, which have gotten kind of big. So the overall length of this is pretty much the same size, about one inch shorter than our Ford Fusion midsize sedan. So just think about external footprint compared to capability and space. So you're still moving seven people, but you don't have that much exterior footprint to worry about when parking and maneuvering through urban areas. So pretty cool, part of what makes it the un minivan. One of the things that really gets you when you first sit in the vehicle is just all of the headroom in here. It's huge. Uh, you know, if you were seven feet four and played center in the NBA, you'd still have plenty of headroom. I mean, it's ridiculous. I can, if I'm sitting here, I can just stretch and, and touch the top of my palm against this big glass sunroof. Another thing that's really cool about the Transit Connect wagon is it has been officially endorsed by Tall Clubs International. That's a society for the vertically gifted and they actually endorse this vehicle as the best vehicle for the vertically gifted because uh, from seat to roof it's got 4.9 feet of headroom. So it's an amazing amount of headroom in here. Even enough headroom to fit um, some overhead storage just like on a plane. So you've got a nice shelf up here to store some of your smaller items. Uh, storage everywhere even above you. Don't forget to look up in the Transit Connect wagon. Uh, Inside it's not bad. There, are, There is a lot of hard plastic in here and for the most part, I think that's going to be a good thing for the demographic that's going to be buying this. You know, people with kids, going to be hard use, it'll be easy to wipe up. I think another area that uh, will have a lot of interest in this are people who are very active in the outdoors. I mean, you could throw three or four bicycles back there. You could probably throw a, a small kayak back there, especially one of the blow up ones. Tents, all kinds of outdoor camping equipment all kinds of room back there for you and your family to get away for a weekend. So you can see the great cargo space here of the Transit Connect wagon. All the seats have been folded flat. It's a nice level load floor. And with just over 100 cubic feet of cargo behind the first row, to get anything a lot bigger than that, you really would have to move up to something like its big brother, the Ford Expedition, which is around 130.8 uh, cargo cubic feet of cargo space. So really nice amount of space without that big exterior footprint. Now the long wheelbase is only equipped with a 2.5 liter four cylinder. A 1.6 liter EcoBoost engine is available, but only in the short wheelbase five passenger version. Uh, it seems kind of contradictory because you'd think the EcoBoost in the larger vehicle, especially because of uh, more torque and a larger torque uh, curve available, would make sense. But according to Ford's research, uh, they say that uh, the people who are interested in this want less complication and uh, that this motor will suit them fine. Now I have to say in driving it for the week that we've had it, we've put uh, probably 400 miles on this vehicle and the power is okay. Uh, it's adequate and we're able to get on and off the highways fine. We're able to pass vehicles on a two lane road just fine. Uh, you kind of wish that it had a little more giddy up to it and the transmission is definitely programmed for fuel economy because you really have to put your foot into it and there is a bit of a hesitation for it to kick down through the gears uh, for it to really accelerate. But overall, you know, not too many complaints on that. And again, for the people who are going to be buying this, the power is fine. There are two tailgate options with the Ford Transit Connect. You have the traditional barn style or you have this liftgate version. Now the barn style is very nice in the sense that it can open uh, a full 180 degrees and you have a clear path in. This liftgate style is also nice that while not power, at least not for the 2014 model year, uh, it is rather large and it's nice because if it's raining it provides you with ample area to stand under and avoid the rain. Again with the theme of keeping things simple trying to take as much cost out of this vehicle as possible to make it affordable for the average family. The side doors are not power, they are manual. However, they open very easily and they glide quite nicely. Very easy to open and close. As you can see, the second row has plenty of leg room, certainly plenty of headroom. There's never gonna be a problem here with headroom in the vehicle. Getting in and out is very easy. I have my own vent control here. Uh, I have controls over the temperature and the uh, vent speed down here. Uh, pretty good area back here. 
uh, elevated seat position so that you can see over the passenger. Great visibility, of course, this huge sunroof. The only downside to this second row is that it does not recline. The reason for that is that the engineers chose to put a cubby hole for the third row passengers so that they could put uh, water or drinks or a cup or something there. There's a storage area right behind where this second row is and that blocks where this could uh, recline. And that really is the only downside to the second row because the seating position is maybe a little bit upright, but it's not uncomfortable. This vehicle in the Titanium Edition has the Ford MyTouch system. Uh, we have been able to connect our older iPod Touch to it and have had no problems. It indexed everything very quickly. And that's a good thing because our iPod seems to screw up every single system in every single car that we ever touch. If It'll take forever to index, it won't play. So the fact that our older iPod, I think it's the first generation of iPod touches, um, you know, it connected immediately. I was able to play pretty much everything in the song list almost immediately, so no problems there. The voice recognition has been fine. Navigation has worked well. You know, my Ford Touch, it works or it doesn't. In this case, it works and we've had no issues with it. The sound system is fine. Um, it's certainly no audio file system, but again, for the demographic that's buying it, they'll be more than happy with it. Our particular model, um, as we said, is the Titanium Long Wheelbase Edition. It starts at $29,000. This one is fully loaded, including the $1,500, excuse me, $1,250 sunroof option. It does not open. Um, it's just the big piece of glass. And, you know, it might be the one option that we would skip on this thing. But other than that, it's pretty much equipped as, as we would equip it. Um, we do have to say what's really cool, although obviously in the middle of summer here, it is a bit irrelevant, is this has a heated windshield. Because the front glass is so big, uh, you know, it might be a little difficult to clean off in the middle of winter. So it actually has a completely heated windshield, which normally is only found in Lincoln and Land Rovers and will clean a windshield, according to the Ford people, in about three minutes. So that's a, a cool thing. That's probably something, especially here in Michigan, that we would definitely order. So $33,000 full boat, full equipped. And we think that's really good value, actually, for what you're getting here. Again, it's not a luxury vehicle, but for the utility that you get, we think that's a very fair price. It drives fine. If you know what the Focus drives like, if you know what the Escape drives like, it's a very similar experience. This is definitely gonna be on the short list for vehicles for us for our next vehicle. Uh, my wife enjoyed driving it. She uh, thought it, it drove nicely, it rode nicely. It's incredibly quiet with all this glass that you have in here. The physical footprint is small. Uh, you know, it's essentially the same size as a Ford uh, Fusion as far as length and width. So it's very easy to drive, very easy to place. You know, this isn't the traditional choice when you're looking for a family truckster. However, we think it's a really good choice. I mean, it's EPA 20 in the city, 28 on the highway, and 23 combined. That's been our experience pretty much to a T. So it gets good mileage. It's very space efficient, both inside and outside. It drives fine. It's quiet. And it's affordable. So we think... Ford has a hit on their hands, provided that they can communicate that message to the world, or at least to the United States, because this is not their traditional choice. And I think that's why they've branded this the Unmini van. Should you buy this? Yeah, I think it's a cool vehicle, believe it or not. And, and this is for coming from a person who owns a 525 horsepower Mustang, okay? I think this is a cool vehicle for a family vehicle, especially with our dogs and our lifestyle. 